So you wanna learn Linux? Ooh, scary. Who do you think you are, tough guy? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Linux is open for everyone, soldier. Just like your mom. But it's not meant for daily use cases and comfort. You're a liar, a cheater, a sinner, and a homosexual. Okay, I see some signs of it cross in you, soldier. You need to first understand that Linux is not scary. It's friendly. It's welcoming. Just look at me. Do I not look friendly to you? Yes, there's a terminal which looks like your social life after you switch to Linux, but even Hollywood knows how to use it. You are telling me that you learn 500 useless Discord commands to make you overcash, but not 10 commands that will save several minutes every day so you can waste them on making more overcash, and you don't even need to use a terminal at all. Yes, there are no Adobe apps, intrusive updates, and Windows bloatware, but isn't that actually a plus point? Instead, you have, um, I don't know, full control over the most powerful operating system ever created. Yes, there are no Games. Oh wait, actually they are. Congratulations Private, he just cleared lesson 0. Now in order to fully get absorbed in our propaganda, we will go through every Linux jargon and concept that will make you sound like you went to a CSE college. Uh, oh, I meant environment. Did I just say propaganda? <laughs> Now the gods thought why should they make one good OS distribution for humanity? Why not make 600 of them? So they took the OG Y Sigma Tux, the elder ancestor we all share in common, and cut him into what we now know as Linux distros. The nodes, for example, became Arch Linux, the cutting edge cult of infinite customization. It said that by chanting the words, I use Arch by the way, cultivates inner peace and prosperity, which they are never going to get because they use Arch. But don't tell them. <laughs> the eyebrows of the Elder Tugs became Debian, the grandpa of Linux. This software is so old that it became very secure because even the modern viruses are incompatible with it. Also, 99% of distros are just a modified egghead of Debian. The crotch of Elder Tugs became McDonald's. I mean Ubuntu. You install it because you're told it's easy and instantly regret it. The pegs of Elder Tugs became Linux Mint. This is the Ubuntu you are promised is designed specifically for X Windows users so you feel like home all the time until you try to update a PP and everything goes to hell. The Simba Concha in Kisura became Kali Linux for people who want to feel like hackers. While the Elder Tux lesser known pet Harrod OS is made for people who want to become hackers. When Elder Tux passed away, someone stole his popular Fedora he used to wear everywhere and till this date it has never been found. Anyways, Fedora OS is the only distro I know that wasn't created out of Elder Tux's body. But how? No one knows that. It's used by people who want to look cool but in reality are just guinea pigs of Red Hat. There's also Temple OS made out of Prefrontal Cortex, Ubuntu made out of Eyes, Justin Bieber Linux made out of Right Eardrum, Satan Linux made out of his left shoulder, and Christian Linux made out of his right shoulder. But the distros only provide the core functionality similar to how cars have their own engine, suspensions, and mechanics. They take the same base Linux kernel and add their own goals and philosophies to it. On the front end, what you actually see and interact with is something known as desktop environment. These are the graphics, UI, UX, menus, docs, widgets, and themes of your OS. GNOME looks like macOS but cooler, Synonym looks like Windows but better, KD Plasma looks like their talented child, while XFCE is the grandpa who just refuses to die. Now for the most of you, this will be enough, but for the vagina repellent people watching, you guys will love window managers. They control how windows appear, move, resize, and interact, but that's it. Then what's the hype all about, you ask? Well, they allow you to permanently get rid of your mouse because everything is at your fingertips. But enough goofing around now, time to go to ground zero. I say how about we skip VMs and dive straight into a dual boot. Now Linux Mint will work great for most people, but I will go ahead with an unconventional take and say that Arch Linux is great for beginners too. The installation is very simple now, and you get to learn a lot more. And it's still somehow more stable than Windows, if you know what you are doing. Now the first thing you might wanna fuck with is how to use all basic functionalities like screenshot, media player, settings, browsers, default apps, etc. KD Plasma, a desktop environment, has some very fun settings to play around with. <laughs> There's no way. Animation speed. This is perfect. KD Plasma, ladies and mental gen. But now you want to install an app. So you open the browser, search for the app, look around for the download button, download it, extract it, install it, install, next, agree. If you are a soy boy. You see, in Linux, we do things differently, efficiently. We just sell ACO spaghetti and boom, I get the spaghetti. We sell ACO Minecraft and we get a Minecraft. That's it. Unbelievable, right? This miracle is made possible only by package managers. These are your Butlers that will bring anything you ask to the table, tailor it to your liking, and organize things if they get messy. Sir, I just installed Firefox from Source blindfolded. 
while deadlifting errors. Would you like me to get rid of unwanted dependencies, perhaps? It's fast, lean, and doesn't ask questions. It installs, it updates, it removes, and it fixes your broken softwares. In Debian or Ubuntu, you use apt, in Arch, you use Pacman or Yay, and for Rail, you use CNF or Yum. I personally like Yay a lot, like Yay S Cowser or Yay Sue. Next, you might notice some functionalities like screenshot, spreadsheet, or something you want to use is missing. So go ahead and search what apps are available for your distro and pull them. And while you're at it, let's make you comfortable with this scary hacking thing called the terminal. Think of this terminal like a file explorer. You're always at a location inside your computer that you can find by looking here or typing present working directories abbreviation. LS lists all LS lists, LS lists, LS lists all files and directories here. You hop inside a folder, you just type change directory and name of the folder. You go back, you just type cd dot dot. And just typing cd will take you back to home, also mass as tilde sign. Commands you type like ls cd and hollywood are actually files in the system too that can be run from any directory. To make a new file, you touch it. To view or print a file, you cat it. mkdir stands for make directory, which if you are a genius, makes a new directory. rm removes a file. rm removes a file. rm removes a rm removes rm removes a file. rmr removes a directory. Now r here stands for recursive, so it will delete all files and folders within that directory too. And f stands for forcefully. You can always type command name hyphen hyphen help to read what it does. cb copies files, mv moves files. And it can also rename a file like this. This is literally kindergarten stuff if you look at it carefully. Find command searches for files and grep searches text inside all your files like this. But the terminal is way more than just a file explorer. You can connect to Wi-Fi, troubleshoot errors, play games, connect to web, edit files, and basically do anything a computer can. Hshop brings up a taskbar, Btop brings up a better taskbar, Neofetch brings up your buying rights, Kause brings up a cow, C Matrix brings up the matrix, Askaisek brings up a space game, Fortune brings up your life. Now this is a command me and my friends keep doing all the time. Pipe operator sends the output of Fortune to Kaose like this and you get some really fun and accurate free astrology sessions. You can even hire me! By the way, you might need to install some of these packages using your package manager. Terminal is extremely fun and addictive just like Discord command, so explore it to your heart's content. But once you start using Terminal, you will soon realize that the Linux file system or FHS is a bit different. At the top we have the root directory under which we have stuff only devs would use. Under home directory we have spaces for all users. When you type cd and tell design comes up, you are actually placed in this directory. Bin contains executable binaries like for ls, cp, cat, etc. Any file here will be globally executable. etc helps you tweak software configurations like discord, spotify, vim and even your desktop environment. Boot contains files that boot your computer. From here you can either go on exploring different distros apps, desktop environments, customize your VMs, and set up your system like a normal person would. Or you can learn about user management, bash, thr bash scripting, bash scripting, bash scripting, permissions, networking, more commands, and new win if you are cracked. God damn, it was a wild ride till here. Can't believe you made it this far, bro. This shows your dedication and perseverance, comrade. You already know everything you need to know to join the leaner scum from your friendly neighborhood turks. <laughs> Uh, wow, you have grown so much. Your eyes from a peasant to a fully grown commie. Uh, go ahead now, soldier. The future is in your hands. Spread the proper <coughs> the word of great Sigma Tags. No, 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 no